Good day and welcome to another episode of Regional Review. I'm Kenya Kamboe, Namibia Media Holdings Correspondent in the Northeastern Regions. On the day show, we'll be giving you highlights of events that unfolded in the Northeastern Regions over the past week. We'll also share with you an interview we had with Mr. Alex from Tumwenini, informal statement here in Rundu, who will be sharing with us how they have been living at that informal statement for the past three years since they occupied the land without the council's blessing. Meanwhile, in history day is get organized day so check out the next video What happened was, uh, I've covered a number of stories over the past week, but I'll give you just an overview of our, what our region is standing like at the moment. If we start with a town like Rundu, which is in the Kavango East region, uh, development is taking place, but yet, as you can see, uh, uh, the gravel roads are being uh, rehabilitated. Some of the tar roads are being worked on, but there are still some tar roads that need some major development on because uh, to be honest vehicles including for myself a journalist to get to some areas you would even want to refuse because the roads are just terrible which is just in the town so it's very bad it's a very bad state of affairs in terms of roads in the road but as the council has promised to, to get the roads fund as uh, administration they are committed to address this issue of road infrastructure here in the rundu you have to go to kurenkuru yes there's a government park being constructed uh, it's Far from completion, but it's good sign for the for the town, which is a new town in the in, in the new region as well. So development is taking place. The police headquarters in Kavango is still on uh, or, or on uh, what work in progress. Construction is still taking place. Going to the Bundu, which is somehow part of good news for me, as well as should be for most of the residents in the Bundu who no longer have to travel two hundred kilometers to Rundu to come and purchase maybe school uniform. Uh, groceries as well as clothes because a new shopping mall has been constructed just uh, as you enter the town where people can now go from the Bundu just spend uh, ten dollar or just food to the to the shopping mall instead of spending around four hundred dollars on transport back then to come and buy for example school uniform which in the Rundu which that money could have been used to buy maybe thirty pairs of school uniform as well so basically in the Bundu, that's what's happening uh, in terms of but other major developments in the Bundu, I can see some areas were still cleaned up. The, the municipality is cleaning up, clearing up land, which means developers are on their way to Divundu to develop the town, which has been neglected, or let me say, which has been underdeveloped for many years now. In terms of Zambezi, we've seen some videos. I haven't managed to travel there, but we've seen some videos and pictures of how the roads are very poor in that uh, part of the country. So. In terms of Katima Mulilo, I spoke to the CEO recently also. He told me that no big plans are in place for the town to develop. Where he's talking about um, bus terminal, the servicing of land, as well as uh, the construction of various complexes within town for office space for most ministries as well as uh, private institutions. Yeah, so basically that is how the region is standing at the moment. But in terms of the poverty levels, people are still uh, living in those uh, the poverty levels in Kavango still remain as it's always being reported where people have to rely mostly on the Amahangu as unemployment is high among the youth, which also resulting to high crime rate. And this goes to my next story about which I did last week about the overcrowded police holding cells here in Rundu. Crime is just too much here in Kavango East and uh, which is now resulted to the police holding cells here in Rundu to be overcrowded. As we speak now, there are over 260 inmates in the police holding cell, which was just constructed to accommodate a lot, around 100 inmates. So, which means that some of the inmates they sleep, they are sleep. What we are hearing from those who might have gone there for, who might have been dressed over the weekend or sometime, no others are sleeping on the, on the floor in the corridor. Some are sleeping in the showers. In terms of cooking, 
because of the capacity maybe not being adequate people are be, now some inmates are using firewood to cook outside for themselves just because the situation is unbearable there i also managed to speak to inspector general uh, sebastian de tunga who shed some light in terms of how the police is struggling to address the issue of overcrowdedness in the police holding cells he mentioned that police holding cells such as those ones in swakop swakop moon uh wallfish bay or shakati in other parts of the country they are also overcrowded so the issue at rundu is not unique it is something that is a, it's a national issue which the police aim to address one of the things he highlighted was that there should be remand uh remand facilities which means that they don't need to be kept inmates don't need, who appear in court don't need to be kept at the police holding cells they need to go to the remand facilities and on other note also in the Burundi police holding cell there's no female section so this means that the, if a woman is arrested she just gets uh, reprimanded in a small room near the church office so basically there's no even privacy between the officers in the church office and the uh, the new female inmates as well. and, and to make what matters what there's no toilet so the inmates as well as the police officers have to share the same toilet which is something which is not favorable uh another story is about or oh, let me see an interview I, it was with mr vincent Cagneto, the app secretary general who recently spoke to namibian son on his thoughts or what are the thoughts of the party or the stance of the party in terms of government's position or government's proposal to list green schemes which are predominantly found in the kavango east and this is what he had to say take is very clear number one uh, our government Namibian government first of all must learn to uh, decide with the people because government is the people and the people are government whenever they are about to take decisions of this nature they must first consult the people which is the Namibian citizens secondly um, the idea is both good and bad uh, one in terms of uh, calling foreigners to come and take ownership of the green scheme, that we don't support. We, we, we have uh, enough evidence at the end as we speak now. Everybody, not a single Namibian, support uh, the idea of leasing out uh, the, the green schemes to the foreign nationals, uh, be it those within Kavango regions or outside Kavango region. We have cons made some consultations with the wider public, including different stakeholders, your farmers association, your regional councils, uh, and many others, including traditional leaders. The feeling around uh, the idea of leasing out uh, green scheme is that uh, the people, we, the people, the Namibian the, uh, citizens has to participate. How? In terms of uh, being part of the green scheme uh, management and, 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 and more particularly the farmers union. Uh, here in Kavango region, people are already organized. The people are organized. Uh, what the government must do is just to come back to the people, though they have already made uh, the public announcement. They must come back to the people and listen to how people want to participate. It's about time that um, the Namibian government has to fully listen to people because all along where the government has been pretending to listen to the people but act otherwise. So that's uh, basically our take. Mr. Alex, thank you very much for making time to talk to us. Can you just tell us uh, about Tumunini location as to how 
the living standards of the people are since you moved here three and a half years ago? Okay. No, uh, this I have to maintain the living standard of uh, the living, uh, the living situation of people here. Let me say it's normal like other people also living in town in other location, but the only challenge that we are having is only water. That's the only challenge that I we are having or we are experiencing. But in terms of people having land and are they happy? Yeah, for sure, they are hundred percent happy. Oh. Because now they've got a place to come home. So, so previously, where were people living? Yeah, actually, these people, the previously, you know, they were living with their uncles, mothers, father. Do you know that you uh, you cannot stay at your mother's place for more than 30 years? Mm. Uh, you will need also your place, your own place to come home. Because that by that time, you get married, you have children and all those things. Yeah, just imagine, especially like myself. For instance, like myself, I was born in Rundu here in Safari. Mm. And imagine now that house in Safari has only got two rooms. Now, me, I'm over 30. I'm, I'm yeah, almost, let me say, 40. I've, I've, I've got also my kids. We cannot, I mean, we, we cannot fit in that house anymore. Then I need also a place to come home where I can raise my children or where I can sit with my wife. Okay. You talked about the issue of water. Give us as to what really happened. Because I know previously you guys used to receive water from Nam Water. Yeah, actually what happened uh, is this. Uh, it was uh, December month of uh, January, some, something like that. Uh, the water tank has been sent to Ovamboland. Kama, it was a, a water crisis that side. Then the water tank have to go that side. We went to the office and asked, when are the truck coming back? And they say even them they don't know when is the truck coming back that is the big big challenge that we're having so where are you currently getting water from now actually we are getting water uh, from nam water we used to go and buy the battery the transport we have to fight by ourselves with the, with other trucks some they overcharge us they can ask you even one thousand dollars to bring for you ten thousand liters and the ten thousand liters at nam, and at nam water they eat it cost only one hundred and twenty-seven dollars, but you have to talk, top up the one thousand, one thousand dollars for the transport to bring, bring water this side. And I think this one is supposed to be for the town council now to see that they could bring the service this side because the money which we are paying now it could, it could even uplift their coffer. Okay. Uh, apart from what uh, the school is, the clinic. How is situation like here? Yeah, the clinic is not here, but actually reserved the place if they, if everything goes well with the town council. Because the money is having land, I think they can get a place where they can put a clinic. But the school, we, they, we've got a place where we've got the school here from grade zero up to seven. Okay. Mm. Uh, in terms of crime, how is the issue here? Yeah, crime this side is not that much because to many residents they work as a teamwork. Yeah, we actually differ it with other locations where we used to hear whereby they used to grab phones and all those plastic for other people if they are from the shop and other things. You know, that's that things or that crime is not here to many. And uh, yeah, we used to experience some um, crimes a bit here, but the people those who are doing it is from other locations. We used to come and do crime here okay now let's talk about the issue of land again in terms of land sale how is the process uh, have you registered everyone here or are you still are people just still coming and you just register no actually now there's no new intake are coming or you know, new people are coming because we see that now we have settled because we don't want, otherwise we will promote this story of uh, of uh, of giving a person a plot from there he sell, then he go get a plot again. Like now we stopped. We are just focused. Uh, we are just encouraging people those who have got plots here. They have to clean their plots, or they must come stay. If they are not staying, then we have to give it to another person who's willing to stay. Actually, here we don't sell land. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk about your negotiations with town council to get this 
area formalized or recognized by state. Where are we? Uh, we are just waiting from there. Because uh, there are still the story which they call uh, is that eviction. Mm. Yeah. It's still active and I don't know for how long it's going to take. Because the town council have a place. I mean, they, they put an eviction order. It was on 16 June 2019. Mm. Yeah, for, uh, to evict us. But mm. uh, up to now, that eviction order is still active. We are waiting for them to see where they can take us. When last did you engage them? Yeah, actually, the last time it was 2020. Mm. But now we went there maybe three to four times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last time we engaged them it was 2020. But now we went there maybe three times trying to put an appointment so that we can sit with them and hear how far are they with our issue but they never invite us to come like we're still waiting for them to call us so that we can go and sit and hear from them okay mm -hmm. i know mr alex thank you very much for your time thank you too okay Patchy clouds and warm conditions are expected in Nkurunkuru for the most of this week. Rundu is cloudy today with conditions clearing somewhat during the rest of the week and temps hovering at around the 30 degree mark. Mostly sunny and pleasant conditions are forecast for Kongola with mild temperatures at around 30 degrees. And finally, Katima is partly sunny and pleasant with sunny skies and warmer temperatures expected as from Friday. That was it from me today. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for another episode of Regional Review same time tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.